There's some timestamps in the description, or maybe I put them in the first comment. I'm not quite sure. Check below if you want. I'm going to break down the history of this tuning, what it is, and kind of how I created a tuning for the ukulele for this style of play. If you just want to play, go ahead and use the timestamps time stamps to skip forward and rock and roll. D, A, D, G, A, D. But it's six strings, so how do we get that onto the ukulele? So these three notes together create a D suspended four chord. D is your root, G is your fourth interval, and A is your fifth. The note in the middle between the D and the A will define what kind of chord it is. If it's an F, we have a D minor. F sharp, a D major. If we have an E, it's a D suspended two. And if we have a G, it's a D sus four. So dadgat could also be considered an open D suspended four tuning. Cool, so let's get those notes on the ukulele. The first time I tried it, it was G, D, up a whole step, D, down a whole step, a. So we got the notes, right? G, D, D, A. But that didn't sound good at all. And that's when I discovered the magic in this tuning is not only the notes, but it's the order. In fact, the order of the notes is even more important. Back to our guitar. If you take a capo and put it on the fifth fret of the guitar and just play the four highest strings, you get G, C, E, A. Sound familiar? It should because that's the ukulele tuning. So what I did was I tuned my guitar to dadgad, and then I put a capo on the fifth fret, and I decided to see what are these four strings here gonna be. Okay, it sounds cool. So what are the notes? We have a G, C, D, and G. All right, so that doesn't sound like dadgad at all. In fact, it sounds like G, or no, G, C, D, G would be G, 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 G. Vowels are very important if you haven't noticed. So let's tune up our ukulele to that. G, same as standard tuning, and I'm playing a low G because ultimately I'm gonna have two G notes, and I like the flexibility of having an octave, but you can, if you have a high G, this is still gonna sound beautiful, so feel free to follow along. Please follow along, you're gonna love it. G, C, keeping that the same, right? D. So your E note needs to come down a whole step or two frets to D. And G. So your A note needs to come down a whole step to G. So these last two strings, your E becomes D and your A becomes G. And you get G, C, D, G. Oof, an open G suspended four chord. sounds amazing all right so what i'm gonna do now is now go ahead and get in tune g c d g and let's zoom in and i'm going to show you these hot spots or these areas of exploration that you can start exploring this tuning with as well as some chords so you can play some songs you know in this tuning but you can also explore and create very cool unique ideas okay so when you're playing an alternate tuning you don't have to play the in the key is named after what do i mean by that if you're playing an open d you don't have to play in the key of d if you're playing in our new open g suspended four tuning which i i don't have a name for it yet if you have a name for this tuning go ahead and leave it in the comment below you don't have to play in the key of g even though it's a g sus four having said that it sure is a whole lot easier so we will be playing in the key of g and let's go ahead and look at some chords. That's the first spot, just kind of exploring some chord shapes. Now what's cool about these chord shapes is I recommend that you move them all around. Okay. Everything open is a G suspended four. That's our first chord. If I take my middle finger and put it on the second fret and strum all these, this is what's called an A minor 11. spacey kind of thing right okay if I and the a minor 11 would be our two chord let's look at some C chords if I take and I play the second fret of the 
E string, and even though it's tuned to D, I'm going to refer to it as an E string, just because it's a little bit easier. This is just a classic C major. Now if I take that and move it up a fret, I get C suspended 4. Pretty fun exploring those sounds, just those basic sounds, right? Now, if I make this shape here, as we know kind of as a G6 or as an E minor 7, in this tuning I get a D suspended 4. Let's take and move that up to 4-4. Four, four. So now it's on open 2, open 2, now it's open 4, open 4. This is a G6. Let's move it up. Open 5, open 5. Here we get an F suspended 2. Now the F chord is not in the key of G, but it's pretty common. You'll see a lot of times, um, especially in kind of like Bob Dylan kind of folk style music, you'll see major chords built off the flat seventh interval. So in the key of G, that is an F chord. So it's not uncommon to see an F chord in the key of G. Although it is an accidental, it's not really technically in the key. We move that up to seven, seven. Sure is pretty, right? And up here, it's a G5 or a G power chord. So you could treat that as your one chord. One, two. I'm sorry. One, four, five. Okay, now we need a good solid G chord as well. Zero, two, zero, four. This is a great G major. And move all these around. That's kind of what's cool about this tuning is when you find a chord, see what it sounds like up a fret. Pretty dense, not terrible, but not great. Here it sounds good, five and seven. Not so much, not so much, not so much. Okay, yeah. So really just here, 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 and here. But as you're kind of exploring this tuning and you find chords, move them around and see what they sound like. You can get some really cool happy accidents. Okay, there are definitely more chords as I kind of continue to explore. I'll probably have a couple extra ones in the PDF handout for Patreons that you can explore. But this is more than enough chords to get you started in this tuning and exploring and having fun and more than we're going to use today as well. I do want to look at the major scale. Though. Let's look at the G major scale. A quick note before we jump into this, the G suspended four is neither a major nor a minor chord. Suspendeds aren't major or minor because... A minor third makes a minor chord, and a major third makes a major chord. Suspended means you don't have either of those. So saying that, you can also compose and jam songs in G minor. That would sound absolutely lovely. We're just doing G major today. Okay, low G string, open 2-4. C string, open. Then we have a D note. You can either play the second fret here, but we're going to play the open D string. Same exact note. E note comes next, second fret of this right here, of the string formerly known as E, like the prince of strings. Fourth fret, this is our F sharp, which is the seventh interval, and then open. So we get O, two, four, open, open, two, four, open. Now you can continue down there and also play two, four on the high G string. In fact, this 4-2-4-2-0, or 4 2 0 2 0 is kind of a hot spot. Okay. 
So you can experiment a lot in that area, okay? So there you have some chords and the scale. That's plenty to get you started with if, I mean, just being creative, having fun, and exploring the tuning. And that's really kind of what this is made for. It's made for exploring. It's made for using this information that you know to create traditional melodies as well as happy accidents. It's a very, very jangly tuning. And as, and as so, it kind of lends itself to being a little more, uh, not risque, but risky with what you're playing because it's probably going to sound cool, all right? Okay, so now let's look in the piece that I composed for us. I composed a little piece here, and it's essentially just a verse chorus format with some finger picking and some strumming. All right, first four measures up. Let's focus on the first two measures, which is more of the riff action. O, two, four, and then pinch the two middle strings, the D and the C. And these are eighth notes, so it's one and two and. One and two and three. And that's gonna ring out throughout the third beat. So let's just do that a couple times. Even that. I mean, that's just having fun and noodling with just those couple of notes. So one and two and three. Two pull zero on our C string here. Then your ring finger comes down and grabs the fourth fret of the G string. That fourth fret of the G string happens on the fourth beat. So that's what helps me keep my timing. Aiming for that and trying to land right on the fourth beat. One and two and three and a four pluck those two middle again then we're on to the next measure index fret second uh i'm going to call again i'm going to call this the c string well it's because it still is a c string two and then the open string below it the e string the d string and then i'm going to remove my index finger and pluck them again and then on the second beat my ring finger will grab the fourth measure of the g string one and two Then on the third, it's three and a, uh, and it's pluck, open, hammer second fret, pull second fret. And then we play the open D string. I'm, I, this gonna, I'm, it's too confusing. I'm gonna call it what it is now. I'm gonna call it the D string, all right? So D string on the fourth beat, followed by the high G on the and. And then you're going to take and put your index or your middle finger on the second fret of the D string, and that'll be on the first beat. So let's play just up to there. One and two and three and a four and one and two. Three and do, do, boom. <laughs> okay, without counting. We get into the strumming and the strumming is down up down up down down up down down up down up down down up down two e and and a uh, four e and then we're gonna hit it again on the first beat of the fourth measure you could thumb strum you could pluck the two in the middle you could strum all the way through it's kind of up to you one and then another down up down up down down two e and and a four two e and and a four okay so just the second half just those the measures three and four All four of these together. Okay, 
we get into the next four measures. We have a lot of similarities going on here. Um, in fact, the first measure is the same. And the first two beats of the second measure is the same. But then it changes. We go O hammer, O two, pull off, zero. Then we're gonna go to four and then open C string. And the first two measures here are Keep that ring finger down on that fourth fret after you play that open one, because when you get to the second fret, now we're on over a G chord, which is open two, open four. And you could mix in the all open strings with this part if you wanted to. That'd sound really cool. It just kind of popped in my head. I'm, I'm not gonna change what I made for you, but you could experiment with that. So we get the same strum pattern, down, up, down, up, down, down, up, down, pluck, down, up, down, up, down, down. Okay, so these four measures together. Let's play through all eight measures together. That was designed to be the verse, and you could either play through that just one time or two times if you wanted a 16 measure verse. Okay, so putting it all together, here we go. could go right to what I created to be the chorus. Chorus is finger picking and we're experimenting with those chords and one that I forgot to put in there that I actually created which is I created it. I'm chord man. Is a D7. If you know how to create chords, that's not the right word. If you know how to compose chords, if you, under, if you understand chords intervallic formulas, if that's a word, intervallic, then you can find and make chords that are missing. Or if you need, I really need an E minor, then you can make an E minor. What's an E minor? It's an E note, a flat third, G, and a fifth, a B. Okay, so you'd find an E, then you would find a G, and then you would find a B. Ooh, there's an E minor, just like that. Cool, so if you take that G shape, move it up two frets, you got an E minor. And, because you have a G in it, you can strum all four strings. Oh, wow, that's cool. Okay, so, like I said, if you know the interval formulas, you can just build these chords. A major chord, a major triad is root, major third, fifth, minor triads, root, minor third, fifth. Then you start to get into suspended chords, seventh chords, but it's all just these formulas. They're almost like recipes for chords. Okay, so we're gonna start off, make seventh fret with your middle finger on the C string, seventh fret with your, oops, with your ring finger on the high G string. So it's not one and two, it's one, a two. Bless you, do you need a tissue? One, a two. That's such a bad joke. So then you're gonna play those open and you're gonna use your thumb on the G string, index on the D string. Then we get to the second beat, which is two E and, and that's gonna go. When you get to the third beat, you're gonna pluck the G, both the G strings. So just practice that first half. One, a two E and three. One, a two E and three. Do, 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 do. 
Okay, and the next one is. All right, now we're gonna pluck those two, open D, seventh fret on the C, back to the open G on the fourth fret, on the fourth beat, and then the open D. So you really slow, just the second half. Okay, so this whole measure really slow. One more time. Let's go ahead and actually play it like three times in a row. Why three? Because it's more than two, but not quite four. Okay, it's gonna be the exact same rhythm when we move down to from seven seven to five five. So you put those two together. guessed it. Same thing with four. So those three measures would be we get to that fourth measure. We're going to play open low G, second fret of the high G, and then open two, then open G, two slide four. So you get third beat we're going to play this d7 however you fret it if that's too hard you could just go and you get that same vibe from the five six seven okay so that last measure slowly let's do it even slower let's do that even slower these four measures together. You either strum a G after that to finish the song. You could strum G sus4 to finish the song, or you could go back into the verse. So what we're going to do is we're going to play through the whole thing. We're going to let this ring, and then we're going to finish with a G chord here. So let's go ahead and finish it on that G major 7. I like that a lot. Okay, from the top. One, two, three, four. So much for watching to the very end. Ten thumbs pro .com, baby. Life is a highway.
All right, everybody. Um, TenThumbsPro.com. The idea here is to help you create a deeper understanding of what it means to be a musician, not just play the ukulele, but to create a deeper understanding with the instrument and how to play it. And you can... you as a musician, not just someone that strums three chords, all right? Thank you for joining us on the journey. Subscribe, think about becoming a Patreon, cheaper than a cheap cheeseburger. And I am just dripping because I just got out of the shower. But that's where the idea for this whole video came from, in the shower. So, shower thinking. It's a good time.